people, I'm Alan Noyes from Fish on TV and it is Tuesday the, oh it, battery's been flattened here, Tuesday the 11th of October, a lovely 5 degrees this morning and you're joining me and the old boys and the tavern lads um, at the Oakland Waters at Gowdle for our memorial match, we went on theirs last time, this is a memorial match uh, we lost Sarah and Martin who used to be part of our club a few years ago so we're here together raising a few quid for the Prince of Wales Hospice and this year I've just cancelled it, we've raised 230 quid so yeah get in, nice one boys there's 23 of us so um, good turnout, not bad turnout, Scotty, the mighty fisherman loves it here he's ill this morning, he couldn't make it so unlucky Scotty it's, uh, I hope you get better soon. Right, Gowdle haven't fished it since last year. Um, it's been fishing its socks off, but I spoke to Steve. This weekend, it switched off. It's going to be tough today. I think if you win, if you get £50 today, you win the match. I think 30s, you'll be in the frame. Um, I'm expecting it to fish quite hard. I'm setting skimmer rigs up and a bombing method for carp. And that's pretty much me for today. I need to get moving sharpish. Starting half an hour earlier. Um, these lads normally fish nine while three. We do ten while four. So I've gone in middle half nine. But you know what I'm like for getting ready. I've got to get to my peg. Right round the other side. Peg 25 I've drawn. I've um, never fished that area. So I've absolutely no idea. Let's get down there. Get set up. And see if we can catch a few fishes. Yeah. Right, here we are, bit 25, I'm already, I'm a bit late. I'm about 25 minutes late actually. No, I mean, I've, I've had my bomb casting, but I had uh, a bit of a walk, then I, I forgot it's their nets, and I've got to walk out way around, get my get myself a net, and messing about and organising. But anyway, we're in, we're, we're, we're fishing. Nice yeah, lovely. Ian Horsfield's Aus, a nice bream. Right. Peg 25, I'll show you in a minute. We've got Mixsmith here, we've got Gluey, we've got Bonzo Ink Corner, right in corner on end peg 38. There's a guy called Paul who's on peg one. That's a really good favoured peg. We've got Arjun Danby on peg 14, again, which I really fancy. I've not fished this area before, no idea what this area is like. We've got my old mate Phil here. We've got Ian Horsfield here, he's their number one. He seems to win all the matches. And then we've got rest at guys all the way around. Nice booth, jazz. Rest at crew knocking about. Right, my peg, let's have a look. As you can see, it's quite tight pegging. As you can see, look. Trees, not a lot of room. And basically, I've set a top two and it's top three and a short kit just in front here it's about four and a half maybe nearly five foot and then it's a little bit shallower so i'm at the bottom of the shelf here it's a little bit shallower it's it just has a shallow up at about 11 meters and i'm at the bottom of the shelf there it's just about an inch or two shallower so there are my skimmer lines i've fired some pellets out out here some eight mil pellets which i'm on at the minute i'm going to keep firing those out there I'm not holding my breath for fish out there to be honest with you, but you just never know. It's weather's changed, carp are not quite feeding apparently. And I've just set a margin rig up down here, it's quite snaggy. As you can see roots coming out all the way around. And it is quite snaggy all around the island here. So you, ne you never go too close to the island. That's where I'm going to be fishing, I've got a bomb and method for out there margin for down here two skimmer lines which i'm going to get on in a minute i've fed them i'm just letting them settle ian's had i think he's had a two pound bream and a couple of small skimmers baits wise these are softened four mils oh, got some micros here for around the method and if i want to mush them up into a bit more of a pace for bream i can do i find that quite good i've got some x uh, some bag and baits xpg and a little bit of um Oh crikey, what they call it now? <laughs> Super skimmer dark. And there I've just put plenty of water in, so that almost goes like a paste for skimmers. Oh, 
that's that's I quite like doing that with skimmers. A few dead reds, there me eight mils, four and six mils. And a bit of corn for later. I've got a worm. I've got worm for ink margin. I can use worm heads out there if I want for bream, depending on how it goes today. Mix of a small fish. So uh, no indications, no liners, no nothing whatsoever on the feet on the bomb. So uh, I think I'm going to give it five or ten minutes and get onto my skimmer lines, let them let them lines settle, and see how we carry on, folks. Um, I think. With it being full like this, I think 30 pounds is going to be a good weight today. 40, 40 to 50, it'll smash it. That's me. That's me feeling. So we'll see how we get on anyway. All right, folks, we're, we're a good three hours in. Three hours and 15 minutes in, and all I've had is a skimmer and a few roach. It's shocking bites are really at a premium at a minute. Phil's had a few little ones and he'd hooked into a cap down in his margin an hour or so ago. <coughs> Ian two pegs down and peg. He's had two carp and some skimmers. He's doing all right. Nobody else is really catching that much. Mix had a carp and a couple of little bits. I think it's the same all around this area. I've heard the catching on the other side. But uh, I just can't seem to get bites anywhere. Skimmer line. Just getting pestered with little roach. Just little taps. I've been feeding 8 mil pellets out there. There's some good carp in here. Not as many as I, I did the other week at Afield. I don't think this place warrants as much bait as what I put in there. Just gone over with a method, and I've had a, I think it was a little sk a skimmer type bite. Didn't quite take it properly. But I've tried both lines short, one at 11 meters. 11 meters, I've not had a bite. I got the, it was about a 10 ounce skimmer on the short pole line, but just no bites whatsoever, even on single maggot. 4 mil soft pellet. I've just fed the margins. My only hope is that something turns up in the margins because I just I'm not getting liners, nothing. No signs that there's any fish moving or interested whatsoever. So got a couple of hours to try and uh, redeem myself, but nobody's really bagging there's a guy walking around saying he's had a few little bits of roach and odd little skimmer but it's not happening folks oh well, that was the duck caught my line so it's i don't know just keep trying the lines that i've set up and hope that something turns up and i've not piled the bait and it's, it's that time of year now where I don't think you can feed heavy. I think we've got to be a little bit cautious with the feed. It's it's on the turn. It's been really cold the last few nights. So we'll give you updates as we go along, folks. Let's just hope we uh, we get one or two in the last couple of hours. But uh, it's been a shocker so far. Right there we go. Not not a lot to report. Well, the tip's gone round, and I think it's a skimmer. Skimmer that. Now apparently, yeah, nice skimmer that. Apparently, they were catching loads of them a few weeks ago. Little ring of chocolate yellow and some micro, so I've got to get back out there and have another go, folks, and just hope some carp turn up on all those pellets. Right, there we go. Right, it's gone round, folks. I think it's a carp. It's not a big one, but if it's a skimmer, it's a mighty one.
Look at the size of fish. Yeah. It's a small carp, I think. Yeah, wafter. Phil's just wanting to know where I've caught them. for folks. He's not the biggest, he might be three pound. But the way today's been going, he's more than welcome. Trees everywhere behind me. Oh, bloody trees. Right then folks, let's get back in, see if we can get another one. <laughs> Little chocolate yellow. Pretty good in winter, ring us chocolate yellows. Right. Got to be careful when you're casting because there's branches everywhere. Oh, lovely. I went in as quiet as anything, that though. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And I'm going to keep the pellets going in. Ducks are my marker. It's absolutely perfect. Oh, I should just... It's just tightening up now. And the quiver tip set. Perfect, lovely timer on. Let's hope we get another one, folks. But these are the first two indica proper indications I've had all morning. <laughs> I've fed this again, a little bit more bait down here. I've refed just in front of me and at 11 metres, not a lot. Just if this goes, I mean, I'd love to just keep catching carp on this because it sounds like I'm going to need it. There's a guy around the other side who's got like a 10 pound carp. Paul, I'm peg one, end peg, peg one, he's got three carp and a load of skimmers so he's doing well. I fancy that peg, I fancy, fancy peg 14 and I fancy peg 38 to be in frame but having said that, Ian, two down, he's been catching quite well, he's got a hell of a lot more room than me and Phil. I did fancy that one as well with the amount of room that he's got and he's, he's getting, I think he's had a couple of carp and Quite a few skimmers now, so he's doing all right. right then. There we go. Updates as we go along, folks. Oh, drop that bite there, folks. On the method. I had two casts since we last spoke. About 15, 20 minutes nearly. Feels like another carp. Yep. We oh, thought about showing me his head. Yeah, that's a nice 
kita He's got to be about four pound, four and a half pound. Bottom lip, lovely. Get in, nice one. Here we go. I'm gonna have to give that another go. Lovely jubbly. That didn't take long, did it? About one and a half minutes, that one, folks. Straight after the last fish I've just had, so hopefully I might be coming to them pellets I've been firing in. He hopes. two fish now. I'm beginning to think there were no fish round here. <laughs> Just check the hook length. That's okay. Again, after I cast it out, I did two lots of pellets again. I'm just hoping there's a few turned up on those pellets. The sun was on that area for a while. I don't know whether it's worn up, it is a little bit shallow because when I'm hooking into them, you can see the fish come to the top. So I think it's, like I say, it, it did start to shallow off when I was plumbing up with the uh, the 11 metre line, it just started to shallow up there we go it's all set nicely let's be careful casting again, I say we have trees lovely sinking my line now quickly because there's a few leaves turned up and it's dragging line all over the place so let's spend a few seconds that's just met met up perfect sat trapped sat trapped trap set <laughs> right there we go timer on let's hope it goes again folks i'm gonna get some more pellets in over the top The good one, and there's been indications as well. Little taps, odd little liner, and I've not had any of them all day. And just start to get one or two. I 
don't mind them ducks being there because they're the markers. There we go. Right, just while, whilst I'm waiting for another bite, pellets, I've cast a few pellets out there, sit here patient now, see if we get another bite. Um, I'm due to try the margin shortly. We've got an hour and a half, an hour and 35 minutes left. <clears throat> I don't know what weight I've got exactly. Three, six, 11, 12, 13, I might have 14 pound. Ian's definitely got more than that. I've heard that the, some guys have got some decent, some big cart around the other side. The other side's supposed to be fishing a lot better. It is like a horseshoe all the way around. So I still think I'm quite a bit off the pace. And I've just not had any fish until it lasts for 35 minutes. Shame I won't catch him like that from the off, but like I said earlier, things are on the change, folks, with the weather. And I certainly won't be feeding like this in another two or three weeks time well you never know depends how what the weather's like if it gets starts getting much colder be a negative approach to start with but i've had to try and make something happen out there i wasn't too worried about putting a lot of pellets in i won't say a lot but more than most will be feeding today i would have thought because it's a bit of a oh there we go that's gone again. I'm not going to say, not a throwaway line, but a, an educated guess that I might get some out there. That didn't take long. Four minutes. Just under four minutes. Smaller cap, this one definitely, I think. Phil's got his eye on me, he says. <laughs> Stay still. I'm trying to wrap the line around him. This is why I always check my old lens when they're wriggling about like this bottom lip again. There we go, another one in the net. Laddy trees. <laughs> I think they could do with a trim. I mean, it's lovely with me, but it's just, you need a bit more room. Right, check the hook length. That's all okay. Right, see you in a bit. Oh, and it's a skimmer, let's take it. Big drop back, right. And this is a smaller skimmer. And just noticing now, just can't quite get that, that one out. Bottom lip again, it's just in scissors a little bit. Nice little skimmer. And the fish are noticeably colder. Right, I have just seen five minutes ago, so I'm gonna let them settle up. I've just seen a swirl down in the bottom there. I'm not going to go straight on it just because I've seen that. I'm going to just let it settle. Probably have another, another cast on this. If I keep catching on this, quite regular, but I'll stay on it. But if not, I've got to have a look down there because there's definitely been some interest down there.
Everybody's going up feeder. Mick's gone up feeder. Phil's gone up feeder. Ian's gone up feeder. Jazz is up feeder. <laughs> They're all chucking up feeder because they've seen me catching. Feeding in. Fish don't even know it's landing there. Could hardly hear that one. As you can see, all leaves go on, get settled. Lovely. There we go. Slight, slight bend, not much. Just enough so I can see a drop back bite when that one did. In fact, when I lifted my rod up, the fish were about three or four yards towards me. I went to reel really quick. I thought I missed it to start with. There you go folks, we're back in. I might just put over soak some micros. I'm gonna put a little ball like that down there. And a few pieces of corn. I'm gonna put corn I think on the hook. As soon as I'm catching on the yellow wafter here, it's maybe mine up to go with corn. So there we go, we'll timer on. Right, over and out. Peg 25, not fished around there before, apart from Peg 38, I've been around there once before. Had a decent day there. Right, I predicted 30 to 50 pound would win it. 30 pound and above to be in the frame. Now I spot to Mr. Incredible who was uh, fished the open here on Sunday. And all the fish were on our side on Sunday. They hadn't got anything down this side. But looking at where the weights have come from, it's been this side. Apart from one end peg. I predicted peg one. I thought six would be a good area. I thought 14 would be a good area. Um, I think I mentioned 38 end peg. So one and 38 end peg. And I thought Ian... Well, quite a bit of room too down from me. I thought he might have a, a few. It's fished bloody hard on that side where we've been. I don't think I had a bite for a couple of hours. I was fishing um, XPG, the expander, ground bait and four mil pellets and, and maggot. I think I had one skimmer and two roach on that. And by quarter past one, that's all I got. Something like that. Hardly anything. I think I mentioned that there were two and a half hours to go or something, and I'd, I'd hardly got anything at all. Meanwhile, feeding eight mil pellets, maybe six mils might have been better. I don't know, but I'd, I'd got eight mils. I still thought they'd be having it with eight mils. It's not quite been cold enough. I've not piled it in. I've probably put maybe a couple of pints of pellets in altogether at the very most. And I did, I did pick one or two fish up on the method. I never had a bite on the bomb. They seem to want method. Which makes me think, should I have put smaller pellets out there for maybe more skimmers to have a go at the method? Don't know. 
7 meter line, 8 meter line and an 11 meter line and a margin. Never had a bite it margin. I mentioned I had a swirl. Thought, ooh, some fishes down there. And then it revealed itself. It was a bloody pike chasing all fish in the margin. Never had a bite down there. And it was a good one. It was at least five or six pounds, maybe more. And work it out for yourself. It was not far off a metre long. Maybe about five or six inch thick. So I don't know, it might have been eight pound. It could, it's hard to tell when it was. I just saw it turn on its side and I went, bloody hell. So that went up the bank. It was there for a while. I, I kept seeing fish dart. Um, so I left that alone. Now I had a run of about 40 minutes. And that was my run done. Never had anything before and I never had a bite after. Very, very strange. Very, very difficult. And I've ended up weighing in. 19 and a half pound so yeah, i've enjoyed the day it's been it was a bit chilly around there but it's been a nice enough day it's glorious now it's been great to see all of the lads there's been 23 of us today we've actually raised 230 pounds for the prince of wales hospice which is what it's been all about in memory of martin and sarah who were members of our club and i suppose you could say turtle as well he fished with us for a couple of years. So that's what it's all about, folks. And the money's going straight to a, a good cause. So wonderful day. Well done, lads. And thanks for turning up. And to Steve for letting us have the pegging a quid cheaper. So he's had his contribution. So Steve at Gowdle, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Right, let's go to the results. See who is the mightiest fisherman. Who's going to win this trophy? Right in fourth place, we have. It's incredible this. Because he said, Oh, no one else fish around here, he wasn't right happy. But he drew what he thought was a nice enough peg, peg five. From peg five on this bank, £29.15 ounces, Mr. Incredible. So, what a mighty fisherman you are, Steve. Well done, some. In fourth, third place, peg one, mention peg one, with £33.3 three ounces. Paul, <laughs> I've forgotten your surname, Paul. Paul Jones. Paul Jones, so well done, Paul. He fishes with a tavern. Peg one, nice peg. 33 pounds, three ounces, so well done, Paul. What a mighty fisherman you are. And in second place, one of our guys, Sean Williamson, with th from peg three. So you've got one, three, and five. All that end at lake, all this side at bank with, your, with three of the top weights. And he's coming with £39, 5 ounces. So well done, Sean Williamson. What a mighty fisherman you are. And very unlucky not to win. He lost a beauty. And I heard the winner shout, Well, nobody likes to see that. I feel for you. I truly do. It's a right lying wind up merchant. In first place from Peg 38, one that I fancied right at the beginning of the video, is Bonzo. Steve, well done, Steve. Big fan of Bag Up TV. In watching too many of his videos, he's fished bomb and six mil pellet all day. He couldn't get a bite on the pole at all. Pretty much like a lot of us down there. And he's weighed in a fantastic 44 pounds, nine ounces. So my predictions weren't far off. So well done, Bonzo. You are this year's Oh boys, memorial matches, mightiest fisherman. He'll love that, won't you, Steve? <laughs> so well done, Bonzo. So I hope you enjoyed today's memorial match at Oakland Waters at Gowdle. It's been a fantastic day, fantastic to get together, and a few quid raised for charity. So there we go, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, it is absolutely free to subscribe to my channel. Just set a Google account up, press subscribe, and then you're there. It's all free. You don't get charged for anything. Freebie. Can you believe it? Can you actually believe it? And if you click the notification bell, you'll get all our videos as we upload them. You get notifications. Wonderful. All this modern technology. Shame I don't know how to use it. <laughs> Some my brother says. Right, where are we next? I have nothing on this weekend because I'm away. With my mum and stepfather. Uh, it will be with the old boys again at 
I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to try and get Woodhouse Grange, there's something like that, Woodhouse Grange, Lindo Lakes, Hayfield Lakes, no we've just done Hayfield, oh yeah, yeah right, I wonder, I wonder, so it'll be somewhere like that, we'll find out, you'll see us on the bank there next Tuesday, so thanks for watching folks, and don't forget, take care, and fish on.